Hi everyone, it's Karnak, Star Wars Armada Explained. Today we're going to be looking at the Rebel Squadron, the VCX-100, uh, and also Harrison Dula. These are a Rebel Squadron that comes in the Squadron 2 pack, and let's dive right in. So the VCX-100 Freighter is a uh, Rebel Alliance Squadron. You can see by uh, look at the top of the card, you know, gorgeous art. You'll see the uh, Rebel Faction icon next to name. You'll see the VCX-100 Freighter. There is no dot or bullet point in front of its name, which means it's not unique. You can bring as many of them as you have squadron points, which in the standard game is up to 134 points of squadrons. Bottom left-hand corner of the card, you'll see the icon for the VCX. Opposite of that, you'll see its point cost, only 15 points. Uh, this Freighter has going from left to right, You'll see that it has in the yellow box there, it can move up to distance three. The next box is it has eight hull. It's one of the beefiest squadrons in the game. It has an anti-squadron armament of three blue die, not too shabby, and an anti-ship armament of one blue die. So before I get into the rest of the cards, I just want to state that like VCXs are just, they're really good. Like... If nothing else, they they can dogfight. They can out dogfight Tie Fighters usually, even two to one. Um, you know, again, their anti ship armament isn't so great, but just man, they're just so tanky that you just don't want to waste any time trying to shoot them. So luckily, they have a couple of things that makes it so you can just get away from them. The first thing being there, you'll see it has the keyword heavy. Heavy meaning that even if you're engaged with the squadron, it does not prevent you from moving away from it or shooting ships. So, you know, they, they won't stop other fighters from blowing apart your ships unless you have something like, you know, the advanced transponder net or something like that, which that combined with them is just oof. Anyway, the next part is they have Relay 1. So Relay is when a friendly squadron resolves a, or when a friendly ship resolves a squadron command, up to one of the squadrons it activates can be at distance one to three of you. So just to give that uh, reference real quick, we have a ship here. Now typical activation range is close to medium. What you can see here is the black and blue circle here. If the, a ship is equipped with boosted comms, that activation range can go out to long. Um, so, you know, as long as the VCX is anywhere within the designated activation range, whether that be the standard close to medium or boosted comms on a ship that puts it out the long, as long as the VCX is at that distance, you know, it is able to then relay distance one to three to another squadron. Like, for example, if Harrison Dula was out here at distance one to three of the VCX, this VCX is at close to medium range of the ship that's using the squadron command, you can relay one squadron command through the VCX to activate a squadron that's at distance one to three of that VCX. Now, if you do have multiple VCXs, you can relay through multiple VC VCXs, but again, you can only activate one per VCX. Okay, and you can't do something like, oh, I, uh, I uh, activate my VCX to then go over to paint, you know, you just can't do that. Again, it's, uh, you have to choose a squadron that's being activated and you have to fulfill all the range requirements. Okay, so that's Relay. Now, combine this with something like Yavaris, uh, which only can activate squads typically at close to medium. And you have like a Relay squadron like this, you'll just see how much further out you can get Yavaris to activate its ability with a Nebulon B. Um, so some players do like to take like the escort variant and two VCXs, which then also opens up objectives that require you to mess around with strategic and objective tokens. And I'll touch on that in a moment, but having that extra range with your VCXs, that helps keeps your virus a little bit safer at the same time. You're still able to utilize your virus's ability, which again, it's that double attack. As long as a squadron does not move during your virus's activation. But that's VCX uh, for the relay. So really good again with eight hole. They're just you just don't want to bother with them trying to take them down. So that's relay one. Again, you can only do one squadron. The next part here is we have strategic. So strategic when you, as in that squadron, end your movement at a distance one of one or more objective tokens, you may move one of those tokens. So does that distance one of you? So for example, here's an objective token 
and you move your VCX to be at distance one of it, you can then pick that token up and then you can place that token anywhere at distance one of the VCX. You can see why this objective is really good with something like fire lanes or sensor net um, because you're able to get those tokens closer to your ships and away from your opponent or if your opponent has those objectives, you can punish them uh, if they did not bring strategic to, you know, you can take those tokens away from them, essentially. So, then they're great. They're only 15 points, and they're just, you you know, they're incredibly hard to flack to take down. You don't, you know, and opponents typically don't want to try to fight and take them down. They're just really, really good. Again, that Relay 1, there's a reason why it's only Relay 1 is because, man, if it had Relay 2, that just would be, you only would need one VCX of Yavaris, and it would just get, you know, a little nuts. So they had to have some limitations there. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to point out that trist trist oh my God, trist uh, strategic, there we go, it only specifically mentions you can move objective tokens, okay? And another thing I want to mention is you can move objective tokens that are underneath ships. If they're underneath it, you can move it out. If it's out, you can move it underneath ships. This is important for something like fire lanes, okay? But if a ship has an objective token on its ship card, you can't yank it off a ship card. That's specifically, you know, the objective token is not... Uh, in the play area, it is on the ship card. So, no, you can't rip objective tokens off ships and move them around. You can't put objective tokens on ships. Again, you can, if they're underneath it, you can pull it out. Uh, if it's in the play area, if it's in the play area, you can move it, you know, in the play area underneath ships, etc. That's totally okay. Now, other token types you cannot move, period. End of story, end of discussion. Again, Strategic is only specifically saying you can move objective tokens. You cannot move proximity mines. You can't move, like, the interdictor rift tokens or anything like that. Any other token types, you can't move. End of story. Otherwise, uh, yeah, proximity mines and VCXs would just be really broken and really dumb. So, no, you can only move objective tokens. Period. End of story. All right. I think we've got that settled up. Now... One thing I do want to get into now is for the strategic, you know, again, it's it's when a VCX ends its movement. So if a VCX, for example, is engaged by an enemy and the VCX is not able to move, you cannot use strategic. The VCX has to be able to end movement at distance one of a token. If it can't move, it, it, it's not able to resolve that ability. Um which is why it's great to have a card like a uh, fighter coordination team, which is if a squadron is at close to medium range of a ship uh, and, you know, you're able to move squadrons. You don't have to activate them, but they're able to move. And these movement buffs like this are able to allow them to utilize their ability, again, to, to move tokens around. Um, so you'll see a lot of that, especially in rebel fleets, because rebels typically have a lot of these support team slots to take fighter coordination teams. Okay, some other things I want to touch on, or one more thing I want to touch on is, for example, if a VCX is placed, whether that be due to an ability or overlap, can they move objective tokens? No, they cannot, because placement is not movement, not the same thing. So, for example, Hondo, let's say this VCX is over here, and Hondo is like, oh, VCX, I don't like you being there, and he move, and he, excuse me, and he picks up the VCX and places it at distance one of the subjective token. Again, it does not resolve the strategic ability because that's a placement, not a movement. Very specifically defined game terms in RNG. They are two separate things. All right. Um, let's move on to Harrison Dula, Space Mom. The bestest character, you know, in, in Rebels, in my opinion. She's in a lot of books, a lot of the material. Uh, Hera Syndulla flies the ghost. And you'll see that Hera does have a dot or bullet point in front of her name. Signifies she is unique. You can only ever have one Hera Syndulla. Um, if there ever is any other pilots who can fly the ghost, again, the ghost is only one ship. Um, it has much of the same stats. It has... You can move up the distance three. It has eight hole. Hera fires a whopping two blue, two black on anti-squadron, and a blue and a black for anti-ship. This makes Harrison Dula an extremely tanky 
you know, fighter, whether you want to use it for anti-squad, even going after ships, you know, it's pretty reliable. You're going to get at least one damage. In some cases, you're going to get two damage. Um, so she's she's really good no matter what. The, the, one of the biggest drawbacks is that Hera is 28 points. And this largely is because of her ability cost, but we'll get into that. And also, Hera only has one brace. So, she, you know, with all that hole, definitely can take a few shots. But if she gets concentrated on, she just melts and she'll die. But you still got to dedicate a lot of resources to killing Hera. All right, so why is Hera 28 points? Before I go into the card ability, uh, Hera does have two keywords. Hera has grit and rogue. Grit means you're not prevented from moving while you're engaged by only one enemy squadron. For, for example, if Hera was engaged by whoop, by uh, Hondo and Naka up here, uh, who is not heavy, so when they're engaged at distance one, uh, typically squadrons cannot move away. Now, Hera has the keyword grit, which means if I am only engaged by one enemy squadron, I can move away. Doesn't matter. They can't stop this. Uh, but one thing to note about grit, though, is that if you are engaged by a squadron that is not heavy, and also by a squadron that does have heavy, let's say that these two are working together, uh, it does work to prevent a squadron with grit from moving away. Um, that's specifically in the FAQ. So you have to kill the squadron that doesn't have heavy before you can then move away. If you're engaged by both, you know, it does stop you and put you in place. Um, there's, was, there's rule technicalities as to why that is, but I mean, again, it's in the FAQ. It specifically spells that out. Another ability that Hera Sandul has is Hera has Rogue, which is you can move and attack in the squadron phase. Now, typically in Armada, most squadrons, like for example the VCX, in the squadron phase, a squadron can either move or attack, not both. Now, squadrons can be activated in the ship phase by a squadron command that allows them to move and attack. But again, that's in the ship phase. If you reach the squadron phase, most squadrons can only move or attack unless they have rogue, which again, allows them to move and or attack in any order of your choosing. So that is, again, part of the reason of the cost is Hera has rogue. Now let's get into Hera's card ability. At the start of the squadron phase, oh, Choose up to two friendly squadrons at distance one to two. Those squadrons gain rogue until the end of the round. Whoa, that's a really, really powerful ability. Why is that? Well, for example, if you have squadrons like uh, Dutch and Wedge. Uh, let me see if I can find him in here real quick. I should have pulled him out before, shouldn't I? Or you know what? I'm just going to pull out Shara because it's another great example of squadrons that are fantastic with... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> with uh, getting rogue. All right. So let's say that your first player, for example. Okay, so start of the squadron phase before any squadrons you choose to activate, you do have to declare Hera's ability so that the other player knows which two squadrons you're giving rogue to. So at the start of the squadron phase, first player or second, you know, first player first, second player second, you say, hey, I'm using Hera's ability. Uh, I need to check who's at distance one to two. Okay, I've got Dutch. And I have Shara Bay. I am giving those two squadrons the rogue keyword until the end of this round. All right, now I'm activating two squadrons of my choice. Oh, look, there's Hondo. I don't like that guy. Dutch is going to fly up. He's going to shoot him. You know, he's probably going to activate him because Dutch throws the three blue die and his special ability is really good. Then I'm going to activate Shara, and Shara is also going to fly up and shoot him. And those two squadrons don't have rogue, but Hera is giving them rogue. Um, so it makes them a really effective combo, especially like at the end of a round where you're trying to wait out maybe another player's alpha strike. And this is kind of like your anti-alpha. It's like maybe he threw a bunch of squadrons in, but now you have your chance to strike back and dish some damage back out. That's what Hera really excels at is giving your other squadrons... Um, you know, rogue. And that's why, again, her point cost is so high. But if you compare this to example, you know, if you bring something like a GR 75, which is 18 points, well, you know, that is cheaper. And yes, it can push two squadrons. But again, that's only pushing them in the ship phase. 
And also, that ship can still be targeted and destroyed by other enemy ships or squadrons. So what makes Hera great is Hera, you can be more sneaky with her, you can stay out of flak range. Again, you can keep it closer to your ships to where you're kind of like, okay, if you come hit me, well, you're going to get flaked, and then I'm going to hit you back. That's where Hera really excels at. I mean, there's a variety of other strategies, but that's why Hera is so expensive is because this ability is just really good, especially against low-hull Imperial squadrons, where if you are using something like Dutch and Wedge to go tap-tap, they just explode. All right, um, I think that's enough you know, exposition on why Hera is really good. Now, one more thing I want to touch on, the last thing, is how does Hera's ability interact with Exogorphs? Because remember, Exogorphs also resolve at the start of the Squadron phase. So, at the start of the Squadron phase, if you're a first player, you can decide if you want to use Hera's ability. You know, first player first, second player second. So whether if you're first player, um, you say, hey, I'm going to resolve this ability. Um, it is before the Exogorphs go, because again, it starts with the second player. So it's firmly in second player's timing window. So if you're first player... You do get to resolve your start of the squadron abilities first, before Exogorphs. Uh, then you get to the second player, and if the second player wants to resolve any start of the squadron abilities, they can, again, before Exogorphs attack. Then the Exogorphs do attack. Alright, uh, so that is Harris and Duel. I don't think I'm missing anything. I'm going to check my thing real quick here. Nope, we covered Exogorphs, we, we covered everything else. So that is the VCX-100, Amazing Rebel Squadron. Um, of course, if you feel like I missed anything or got anything wrong, please be sure to point it out. Let me know. Uh, we're, I'm going to be focusing on doing the rest of the squadrons I haven't covered. Um, again, I'm going to try to continue to provide content for the channel as I've done all the upgrade cards. They're all done. We have to wait till Clone Wars, so hopefully we'll get some more information about that soon I can cover. You guys are great, and hey, I'll catch you next time.